This is part 13 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss developer exception page in ASP.NET Core and its use for us as a software developer. Now, let's take a look at the code that we already have in this configure method. We are going to use the default behavior that we get out of the box with this use file server malware. So to keep things simple, I'm going to stop passing file server options to our use file server middleware. And then let's throw an exception from this middleware that we are registering using this run method. So let's throw a new exception. And the exception message is some error processing the request. With all these changes in place, let's run our application. Notice we do not see the exception. Instead, our application's default document, default.html, is served. If you understand how the request processing pipeline works in ASP.NET Core, then you might already know the reason why we are not seeing the exception that we are throwing from the middleware that we have registered using run method. From our previous video in the series, we already discussed this use file server middleware combines the functionality of use default files and use static files. And if we take a look at the WW root folder, we see we already have default.html. So when we issue a request to the application's root URL, in our case, we are running it on our local machine. So when we issue a request to localhost colon 15410, this is our root application URL. So this request is handled by our use file server middleware. So at this point, the pipeline starts to reverse and this middleware that we have registered using this run method will not get the opportunity to execute. So we do not see this exception. Instead, we see this default document served by our use file server middleware. Now let's request a static HTML file with name abc.html. Notice now we see the exception that we are throwing. So let's understand what's going on here. First of all, we know we do not have a file with this name abc.html within our www root folder or any of its subfolders. So this use file server middleware will give up processing the request and passes that request to the next piece of middleware. And this middleware here is throwing an exception. And that's the reason we see this exception page. If you have any experience with classic ASP.NET, then you must be familiar with this page. This is similar to that hello screen of death in classic ASP.NET. We call this page developer exception page in ASP.NET Core. And as the name implies, this developer exception page contains exception details. Notice on the first tab, we have the complete stack trace, including the file name and the line number that caused this exception. On the second tab, we see query string parameters. At the moment, we don't have any query string parameters and hence, we see no query string data. But if we have query string parameters like a equals 10 and b equals 20, for example, we see both those query string parameters under the query tab. Similarly, this third tab contains cookies information, if any. And this last tab contains request headers. So this is all very useful information for a developer like us to understand the root cause of the exception and properly fix it. Now, who is serving this developer exception page? Well, if we take a look at the code in configure method, as the name implies, this use developer exception page middleware is serving this developer exception page. So let's understand how this use developer exception page middleware works. If we take a look at our application's request processing pipeline, the first middleware component that is plugged in is this use developer exception page. So now when we make a request at the moment, we are requesting for this file abc.html. This middleware use developer exception page is not going to do anything with the incoming request. It will simply pass that request to the next piece of middleware that is use file server. And we know we do not have a file with name abc.html. So this middleware component is going to pass that request to the next piece of middleware. And this middleware is throwing an exception. So if this use developer exception page detects that any other middleware that is registered 
after it in the pipeline produces an exception is going to take that exception and serve this exception page so the point that i'm trying to make is use developer exception page middleware must be plugged into the request processing pipeline as early as possible so it can handle the exception and display this developer exception page if a subsequent middleware component in the pipeline raises an exception now let's see what's going to happen if we plug this use developer exception page middleware later in our request processing pipeline so i'm going to cut it from here and place it after this middleware that's actually throwing the exception so let's paste it here and then build our solution notice now when we reload this web page we do not see the developer exception page we see very little information all we see is localhost is currently unable to handle this request and we see that the server has produced error 500 so the point that i'm trying to make is for this use developer exception page component to work properly it must be plugged in early in the pipeline so let's move it to the front of the queue build our solution and reload this web page we are back with the developer exception page now like most of the middleware components in asp.net core we can also customize this use developer exception page middleware whenever we want to customize a middleware always remember we may have the respective options object in this case we want to customize developer exception page middleware so from the intelligence we can see we have developer exception page options object so let's create an instance of this developer exception page options class let's call the instance also developer exception page options with the lowercase d and we are going to use this property source code line count and i'm going to set this to 10 i'll explain what this property will do in just a bit and then let's pass this developer exception page options object to our use developer exception page middleware and then build our solution now before we reload this page take a look at the stack trace we know line number 40 is the line which is actually throwing the exception and notice the number of lines of source code that we have before and after this line which is actually throwing the exception we have around five lines of code and at the moment we have set source code line count property to 10 so let's reload this web page and see what happens to the number of lines that we have before and after the line that's actually throwing the exception notice it's increased to 10 now let's change the value of this source code line count property to 1 build our solution and reload our web page notice now we only have one line of source code before and after line number 44 which is actually throwing the exception so this property that is source code line count property determines the number of lines of source code to display before and after the line that actually causes the exception now let's quickly recap the main points to enable developer exception page plugin use developer exception page middleware this middleware must be plugged in as early as possible in the pipeline it contains all the valuable information that a developer would need like stack trace query string cookies and HTTP headers finally if you want to customize this middleware use developer exception page options object that's it in this video thank you for watching